All right, here we are. We made it. We made it. We made it. Welcome, 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 and welcome again to Thursday Night Live Bible Study Chosen Chick Style. Yes, I'm going to uh, pray and ask that you give me a little bit of grace. I definitely was two minutes late on tonight. Y'all know I try to be timely. I respect your time. I appreciate your time and attention. So please do forgive me. I was trying to get this technology together and it ran a little long on this evening. Uh Oh, my sister's in the building. Hey, Lisa, thank you for being here. Of course, my girl, Sarah, Sarah, I saw you pop in and pop off. There you go. My girl Sarah is in here early and on time. Sarah, I was just apologizing for being late. I was trying to get the technology together. Also, y'all, let me know if the sound is okay. Just so you take a step into my world for just a moment. <laughs> y'all know and I know y'all have heard me say that we're a little old school over here. And the HVAC is loud and it's literally right here, the system where I am. So normally I thug it out, I turn it off, y'all. <laughs> I, I couldn't do it tonight. I don't know if it's the temperature of me or what. So I got headphones in tonight. So that was part of my issue because that was not in the plan. But thank y'all, I appreciate it. Sarah said the sound sounds good. I trust you, my girl. Let me do this. I guess I'll stick the other headphone in. I don't know what that's gonna do. But y'all, and y'all see I'm already shining. I, don't, I hope I'm not perspiring and get a little napkin going on here. So, y'all, thank y'all for just being so gracious <laughs> and so kind. My girl Rose is in the building. Hey, Rose. My girl Tiff is in the building. Hey, Tiff. Welcome, y'all. I so, so, so appreciate y'all. Let me see. I guess we're straight here. Let me leave this alone for something. Flip over and just, we're not even going to be bothered <laughs> with that. Again, welcome to Thursday Night Live. This is Bible Study Chosen Chick Style. I'm so happy to see your face in the place, whether it is here live or if you are catching the replay, hashtag replay. Okay, yes. So Chosen Chick, the Chosen Chick discussion group is one of my babies. If you follow me on social media, you know that I have several. But Chosen Chick Discussion Group is near and dear to my heart. We are, um, I, I've been saying 18 months, two years, 18 months, two years, but we are definitely closer to the 18 month mark. So about a year and a half ago, God placed it on my heart to carve out a sacred space on the internet where women of God like myself can come together and discuss what the word of God has to say about us. So this is the place where real women have real issues and discuss those things that are going on in our lives, okay, in our family, in our homes, in our faith. And we always want to govern ourselves according to what this word of God says, this holy scripture, because that is the most important thing. That has to hold the most weight in your life. So if you haven't arrived to that place yet in your life, if you still have your hand on that steering wheel, if you feel like you have to be in the driver's seat, then definitely come spend some time with us. Let us dive in. Let us understand what it is that God has for you, what he says about you, and know that you are not alone. You have sisters right here. So we you know, we we tell jokes, we have fun, and we get life-changing sustenance. We get life-changing moments from the Word. So thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you for being here. For those who may not know or may not be as familiar, I am Artisha T. Bolding. I am the creator of this group. I am your lead facilitator, teacher, big sister, all of the things for tonight. I am an ordained minister and uh, certified life coach. I motivate women and entrepreneurs to birth their business book or brand. I am building legacies of health, wealth, and wisdom through transformational empowerment, life coaching, and I love it. I make sure that my clients, my sisters, my friends are no longer stuck in life, but thriving in success that's aligned with their passion and purpose. And I love how God just set the whole thing up. If you had to ask me five years ago, even three years ago, if this is what I will be doing, 
I would never have imagined, but God set it up so that I'm able to flow in my purpose. And so that um, I do that in both ministry and business. I do it at home. I do it in the community. That's just where I am in life. And I'm so grateful to be able to get uh, and provide guidance for women entrepreneurs seekers so that they can get to that place as well where they know their purpose they have clarity in their lives and they are just in that flow so it's wonderful so i so appreciate you and with that let me get my water going like like i said i was tied up in technology and air filtration <laughs> yes indeed we are about to pray thank y'all for checking in early we know some folks might need to join us a little bit later i'm getting my cough drop game going y'all know how it is all right we got that so let us pray and our sisters will join us and we're so thankful for our brothers and sisters internationally who will have a chance to see this later on youtube by the way if you couldn't be here with us live absolutely go back catch the replay drop the comment hashtag replay so that i can acknowledge you and engage with you so that you can get all of these good yummy blessings that god is about to pour out on us okay let us pray heavenly father in the name of jesus god thank you for this day this time this very moment god thank you that nothing that has come to us from this moment prior nothing could stop us god any foul play any foul plan anything that the enemy decided that he wanted to conjure up it could not work it did not work because you saw fit for us to be right here in this present time in this present moment so god thank you thank you god that it will be a life changing moment lord god thank you for doing something special for my sisters right now tonight in this moment thank you for doing something amazing for the folks who will catch the replay and see this on other platforms like youtube lord god i thank you lord god that this word tonight will be hidden in our hearts oh god that we won't sin against it i thank you god that we will receive revelation knowledge oh god that a light bulb will come on that we will see something different that it will be illuminated in our heart and in our spirit oh god in a way that we've never seen before god hide us behind your cross all flesh decrease right now holy spirit increase and take over lord god speak to us and through us oh god we will hear we will obey god and we thank you thank you for doing something amazing in our lives thank you god that healing will come forth through this word lord god thank you god that joy peace and love will come forth through this word and we thank you that it will fall on good ground and bring forth fruit in jesus holy name amen 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 yes let's go okay y'all give me one second y'all gonna get a little crunch y'all know i try to do this ahead of time Because I definitely cannot have all of that at one time. And still talk, clearly. <laughs> all right, let's go. So, tonight, tonight, tonight. Tonight, we're going to be talking about perspective is everything. Not just perception, but perspective. Perspective. How you view a situation. How you view a situation is going to color contour it's going to change how you move how you react how you respond in that situation so the perspective in your life guys it has not guys ladies friends my sisters it has to be in the word of god it cannot be in old traditions it cannot be in just what mom said auntie said uncle said it cannot be from your trauma, drama, things that were acted upon you, things that you had no control over. It has got to be in this word, in the scriptures. Okay, so perspective is everything. It's everything. How you see something is everything. You have to say what God says. You have to see what God says. And you have to walk like God will want you to walk throughout this life. Okay, so let me try to be obedient to the notes. Let me go. And do just a very quick 
recap. Oh my goodness, last week was a blessing. It's still available on the replay right here in the group, as well as on YouTube on the Healed Girl YouTube channel. I will drop that link later when I do my replay, hashtag replay. And we talked about he'll fight my battle. My goodness, God shows up in supernatural ways. Because how many of us know that God doesn't do anything halfway? He doesn't do anything slack or short. God shows up full and he shows out. Okay, even when we have gotten ourselves ourselves into a mess okay once we call on him and surrender he will show out he will work the thing out i said this who was i praying with a client i think i was praying with uh, a client when we invite god in into a situation into our lives for real to sit on the throne of us as my dad can say to be in that driver's seat he not only shows up but he shows out he comes to wreck shop okay he's not going to do anything just regular just oh, okay that's fine that's no he is going to show out the more we give it over to him the more we cast cares okay i wish chelsea was here y'all know i didn't even invite anybody let me just do a quick Sarah, you came up on there. Afy, wonder what Afy doing. I'm gonna just hit these invites real quick. I appreciate y'all. We got a little topsy turvis turvy. My um, what did my old boss just say? Caddy wampus. <laughs> I love that word, caddy wampus. It's just you know a little bit, but guess what? We're not delayed and we're not denied. We're gonna do exactly what God has called us to do on today. Is my puppy out? She sounds really loud. Hold on. Okay, excuse me. Just had to check and see if she had snuck out and was under the table. This, um, so that's what we talked about. He'll fight my battle on last week, even in a war. We specifically looked at a war between the children of Israel and their allies and Moab. God showed out, even though it was foolishness, even though they didn't seek him ahead of time when they were going to the battlefield. When they did stop and they say, what does God have to say? Let us seek the man of God. And then God still showed up. That's just amazing. So this week, again, we're going to be talking about perspective. Perspective is everything. Keep your eyes and your mind on the things of God, your mindset, okay, on the things of God. And you will win every time. That is your formula for victory. Every time, every time, okay. And let me just say this. This was really strong on me earlier and I'm just going to speak a word. I'm going to pray at the end. You all know that um, towards the end, you get your um, prayer request ready. If you have a lengthy or confidential prayer request, you can email that to me at thehillgirl at gmail.com. You can also get a copy of tonight's uh, notes on the lesson as well as commentary. Same email, thehillgirl at gmail.com what was really really on me and i'm going to speak the word now is for a great leveling out for us his people i want god to level us oh we're not going to be lopsided we're not going to be off kilter we're not going to be cattywampus okay and it's so interesting i had this in the notes god put this on me earlier and then the you know the heat thing came up and everything but it is all good but i'm looking in here because i want to speak these things i'm speaking a great leveling out on the numbers that are affecting God's people, especially health-wise, mentally and physically health. So I'm speaking that the diabetes and diabetic numbers level out. No more high and no more low blood sugar. That we are going to come up and be right on the level that we're supposed to be. I'm speaking that oxygen levels won't be low i don't know if there's a such thing as a high oxygen level I, i've never heard of that but if it is we're going to speak that it's a great leveling out for the people of god that we be right on par right where we need to be in this health situation but then the same thing i'm going to speak that we are leveled out that we are even and right on kilter right on target in our emotions that mentally we will keep our minds stayed on Jesus so that he will keep us in perfect peace and so we will have a great leveling out even just to swing back to health one moment even uh 
those of us who have had heart conditions that it will be a great leveling out that the heart won't race and that it won't flounder that it won't be sluggish but that it will be right on point right on point and i'm speaking and believing that when we have to have these doctor visits, whether it's for our mental health or our physical health, that things will just be so leveled out that the doctors will say, wow. And I know I've been saying this at least since 2019, that we will be walking miracles. That when we go into these doctor's offices, when we go to have these exams, when we go to have these reviews, all of this, that doctors will literally be shocked at how our numbers have evened out, how we have been healed from things that they know. They might not be willing to say it right off, but they know that medically and scientifically, it doesn't make sense how did we see this one thing and now we don't see it? How were you feeling like this? Were you showing these signs and now you feel great? You look great. Things are so different. It's because the spirit of God, the spirit of healing is going to be present in our life. I just wanted to speak that. And guess what? That falls right in line with perspective. You cannot look at a doctor's report. You can't look at the news and the larger media or even social media and have that be your perspective. Once again, what God says about you, the promises that he has made to you and over your life, that has got to be your perspective. If you have any lenses, you have to look through the lens of the word of God. Okay, so I'm thanking God for that leveling out for all of us his people that we will be in balance mentally physically emotionally spiritually and financially okay that we will know that our identity who we are as peoples as, as peoples as people as creatures we are in christ okay all right so let's let's go to our song did the recap trying to obey the notes here <laughs> um there's always a song. So I just want to share just a few lines. I made it out all right. Thank you because you didn't leave me nor forsake me. Thank you because you didn't let my enemies take me. I'm still in the fight. I made it out all right. Now, that is so many of our story. That is so many of our story. For some of us, it's very present and it's very current. You were dealing with something today. You were dealing with something this week and said, you know what? I had to face that. It's okay. I made it out all right. God made a way. Some of us, it may have been a while ago, but it's not so far out of our memory that we know God, God brought me out of this. I made it all right. Thank you, God, that you didn't let my enemy take me. We made it out and we made it out all right, y'all. So I'm excited about that. Okay, so let's go. We're going to jump right into the scripture. I didn't have a question for this week. Wait one second, because I had something down here at the bottom. Wait. Let me say this, and this is going to be, if I had to tag it, I would tag it as the message before the message. Okay, hashtag message before the message. Listen, there, when we go to God, our heavenly father, that first of all, that is the posture that we have to go to him in when we pray. He's the creator of the universe. Again, not he, man. He is the master of the universe, the creator of the universe. And he just so happens to be your dad, literally your heavenly father. So you don't have to go to him in form or fashion. You don't have to write a thesis before you get on your knees and pray. And in fact, we know that that is a posture of reverence, but you don't even have to be on your knees. You see, I'm sitting right here at the kitchen table. I just prayed and I spoke a word over your life as I do each week. And I believe that. And we have seen results from that. Hello, y'all already inboxing me, texting me, calling me to let me know what God is doing. He's doing fabulous things in your life. So we know it's not about form or fashion, but we have to know there's no need when we go to God, whether you stand in prayer, whether your eyes are closed, whether you're speaking it out loud or not, we don't have to go to God with flattery. 
Okay, we don't have to go to God with manipulation. Pastor Terry used to always say this. You cannot do psychology on God. Okay, did you know that God created your brain? <laughs> you can't do psychology on God. Don't try to manipulate him. He's your father and he's already, this is what one theologian said, he's already intimately involved and intimately knowing what you stand in the need of. Okay, so we should climb into his lap as a child. Okay, that's our father and asking him and then getting over ourselves, getting beyond ourselves to just watch him move. Okay, perspective perspective how are we viewing god in our life is look is he the at the steering wheel or is he the spare tire is he i'm gonna try everything else first and then if that doesn't work okay god all right now what you gotta say what you what what do you think about this no that's how we get messed up okay so perspective perspective i just wanted to say that real quick all right let us jump on in the time has been spent but i do believe that it has been good already i don't know why my throat all of a sudden it's trying to be scratchy when it wasn't earlier. Y'all excuse me. Thank you. Psalms 119 is the first place we're going to go. We're going to go to Psalms and we're going to jump right on over to Proverbs. Okay, Psalms. I am mostly new living tonight, but one of our Proverbs is going to be from the New King James Version. Y'all know that I do drop the scripture references into the notes when i do my replay hashtag replay i drop those scripture references for you so that you can see and you can go back whether you're doing a replay or whether you're just taking notes down for yourself and you read this this week i always recommend that you do that would be really good and also it's available to you if you request notes and commentary the scripture references are definitely in there okay so psalms psalms 119 we'll look at one verse there perspective okay perspective Psalms 119 verse 18, this is New Living. It says, open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instruction. Open my eyes to see the wonderful truths in your instruction. We've been saying that already all night because the truth, that should be with a capital T, the truth. The truth is going to stand up against any fact that you may see in your life. My girl Sharonda just slid in the building. Hey Sharonda, thank you for being here. Any fact, and I say fact with a quote, because what the doctors say might be their scientific fact that they can see right then. But the truth of what God says about you is he says that you are healed. He says that you are whole. He says that you can ask for anything in his will and you will receive that. Believe it and by faith, you will receive it, okay? So the truth versus the fact, that could have been a whole other lesson. I'll see what the Lord says and see if that'll come back another time. The truth versus the fact. The truth might be that your husband, your significant other, just grates on your nerves and y'all are just misfiring. Y'all just kind of miscommunicate and can't connect like what is happening, what is happening. But the truth is that God invented marriage. God brought marriage to make you holy, not happy. Again, a whole nother sermon. I'm pulling out too many tricks out of the bag. I need to put some of this stuff back in. I think I'm feeling bad because I was late messing around with this heat. Listen, God created marriage. God loves marriage. God loves unity. So he wants you to be in peace. He wants you to be in alignment. He wants you to be two come together as one and letting no man, no situation, no problem put that asunder. That's the truth versus the fact, the truth with a capital T. Okay, the truth is that dreams do come true because God has given you a purpose and a promise. He has called you for such a time as this. Come on, I'm pretty sure I've said that for the last several weeks. So somebody needs to hear that and understand that. That is the truth. The fact might be you might just feel stuck. You might just feel down. You might just feel like this is all some bull crap. I don't even want to deal with it. I'd rather just stay in bed and have some coffee and chill out but the truth is is that you have a calling on your life let me go to this next one because then i got a little something that i want to share with us so flip over one book again for this particular verse one verse here out of proverbs we're going to share the new king james version 
And this is familiar. You've heard this. And I just need you to understand what this means. We're talking about perspective, how you see things, the lenses through which you are viewing your life, viewing your situation, viewing your relationship, viewing your business, your career, the work that you do every day, viewing your family. Okay. Perspective is absolutely everything. Okay. In Proverbs chapter 14, Verses 12, you've heard it before. New King James Version says, There's a way that seems right to man, but its end is the way of destruction. I mean, it's death or destruction is another version. Its end, but its end is the way of death. So let me just say this. And God did not allow me to put this in a note. So he knows what he's talking about. We know what this means spiritually, right? We know that if people don't do the ABCs, the accept, believe, and confess, and really invite Jesus into their heart, then they are going to go to hell, okay? They do not have eternal life. When they die, it's over for them, but their spirit will be tortured and tormented. That's what we believe. As believers of Christ, that's what we believe. If you want to talk more in depth about that, we can do that offline. I am available to you. So there's no question about that. That is a universal truth. That is just understood, okay? So let me take that to, uh, let me blow that out a little bit and take it to a natural spiritual connection. There go my girl, Hazel. Hey, Hazel. Thank you for being here. Hazel, we just shared, we talking about perspective. Perspective is everything. We just shared Proverbs chapter 14, verses 12, the New King James Version that says, there's a way that seems right to man, but the end is the way of death its end is the way of death so i want to talk about your dreams i want to talk about your promise that god has given you again your gifts and talent your natural abilities the things that you just flow in the thing that you literally would do for free if you didn't have other obligations if you didn't have other responsibilities and priorities again whether that's gift giving whether that's making art whether that's doing community outreach whether it's ministry whether it's um, baking, okay, painting, I think I might have said that, singing, whatever your thing is, connecting with children, okay, connecting with the elderly, whatever your thing is, you may have, you may be like me, you may have the anointing to birth and pull purpose out of other people, to pull businesses out of other people, whatever that dream and vision is, there's a way that seems right to you to bring that vision to pass or not. Okay, your vision could be, oh, that was just a dream as a kid, or oh, I thought about that when I was in college. That can't be my life. That's not reality. Your way will lead to death, the death of that dream, the death of that vision, the drying up, if you will, of that anointing that God has given this thing to you, this cherished gift, okay, this treasure, right? And saying to you to go forth, be great, do these things, go in, in and accomplish this purpose that I have given you. That's why it's so important. The most important thing that you will get to know besides Jesus is to get to know his purpose for your life. Come on, somebody. You have got to get to know his purpose. That's why I love the book Purpose Driven Life. That's why I do the work that I do in business and in ministry so that you will know beyond the shadow of a doubt. Alexandria is in the building. Okay, she's going to catch the replay. Thank you, my dear. We'll be praying for you and we look forward to seeing you in the replay, okay? So you don't want your dream to die. You don't want your vision to become cloudy, blurry, and die. There's a way that seems right to you. But what is God saying to do? God may be saying, okay... You can't get eight hours of sleep tonight. You can't get before, but I'm going to give you the supernatural energy because you're going to step into that obedience. You're going to have that perspective that, okay, God, I'm going to rock with you. God, if you're rocking with me, I'm going to rock with you. I'm going to stay up. I'm going to write this plan out. I'm going to pray, God, and put my plans before you. I'm going to see what your spirit has to say unto me about what you will have me to do. God, maybe there's something that I can do on a Wednesday. Maybe I can do something virtually for these kids after school 
or on Wednesday. God, maybe there's something I can do on a Tuesday. Maybe I can go pass out some sandwiches and some juice box on a Tuesday. God, maybe there's something I can do on a Monday. God, maybe I can go pass out some mask and hand sanitizer on a Monday. God, what is it? God, maybe you will have me got to go live on Facebook and sing a song, speak an encouraging word. God, maybe you will have me go live on Facebook, Instagram, and anybody that comes up, I will just smile at them, say an encouraging word to them, pray for them, see if they need prayer. God, what is it? Okay. And you will be surprised. My dad said, and I, it trips me out and it happens here too, because y'all tell me that when you have been thinking the thing, something has been in your spirit. And then the spiritual leader, the facilitator, the person says the thing that God has had in your spirit. That's just a special message to you. That is what you call what confirmation. That's what God says. Check and check. Yep. Uh-huh. That's what I said too. I dropped that on T just like I dropped it on you. So, you know, yep, that was me talking. Yep. Let's go. So he said this some weeks ago, maybe some months ago now that now, he don't do no whole lot of staying up late, but when he do, you best believe it's vision and purpose behind it. And he noticed when God had him in this certain vein doing this thing, like for instance, he's doing a huge renovation project right now that we're partnering with and we're very excited about it. And we're getting to see some of the updates and it's phenomenal. And so he was noticing that during this time, and he gets up early to do his work. He likes to get up really and be at his client's place at sun, uh, like pretty much at sunrise, certain ones, right? And so he noticed that even though he was going to bed later and getting up earlier, he still had enough energy throughout his whole day. Hazel says, spirit led. That's exactly right. Where's my girl, uh, 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 Rose, where is, uh, 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 Daphne? Tag her in uh, this world. So, um, even though he was having significantly less sleep, he had energy throughout his day to complete his task, to get the work done. Perspective. If you try to think of it with your logical, finite human mind, it will not make sense. It will not make sense. God, when the Lord tells me to reveal it, I'll be able to reveal it. But I have had sisters come and tell me, family members come and tell me, and even personal stuff with me and Mr. Bowden. Financially, y'all, when I say it did not make sense, it did not make sense. But God said, make the call. God said, send the text. God said, put in the request. And when I say he showed out, and I even like, y'all know me, I don't play. I even, I was like, okay, wait a minute, Lord. <laughs> hey, wait a minute, God. Now, wait a minute. Did you say God said, just ask, just ask, moved like that, moved like that, showed up and showed perspective. You cannot logicize and academicize. That is not a word, but you can't try to put your academia, your learning, your degrees, your knowledge of the natural world onto God. Keep him out of that box. You can't have him closed in like this. All of the good stuff is in the inside. Okay, you want to get all of this living water. Come on, somebody. You want to get all this living water out, but you steady got the cap on him. God, no, I don't want to ask them that. God, I'm just going to do this. You know, I'm just going to go to my little job and do so and so and so and so. God said, no, God, this is what God is saying. Perspective. God is saying, take the limits off of me. God is saying, I have all of this right here that I want to pour on you. If you take the limits off of me, if you get your right perspective, if you step into your obedience, come on. Hazel said, you can do when you do it. And God, you feel like you had an eight-hour night. You wonder. And it has been times I have literally wondered. So I'm not crazy enough now that I get mad with God because I literally used to get mad with God. Like, really, God, you really just going to wake me up at 3 and 4 o'clock in the morning? Like, that's what you're going to do? <laughs> like, I, like, not mad, mad, but, like, really kind of rolling my eyes. Like, really, like, this is what we're doing now. But some of my greatest revelation have come between, I mean, not between, have come, I won't say no hours, but have come in the wee hours. I'm talking about three, four, five, okay? Come in the middle of the night. And so my brother, Hazel husband, Reverend Crosby, teaches that you should keep a notebook, some kind of device to take notes by your bed table. Like you should be able to get that. You should be able to turn over and say, boom, and write it out. How many times? Have God just blown me away? And I'd be like, what? What? I'm just going to share this because it was funny and I'm not bragging. It's just hilarious to me because I don't, I, it's only by the spirit. Let me just say, I wouldn't be doing any of this. 
this none of this was on my list to just say oh i just want to do that no not at all and so somebody today literally texted me my phone and they said you are a content creating beast and somebody said it last night too in another word but i mean another way and i just was like thank you keep me in prayer <laughs> that's all i can say i just choose to be obedient there's no difference between me and anybody else it's just that i choose to be obedient and god is doing the thing supernaturally because it doesn't make sense it literally doesn't make sense okay let me go ahead on to the next one did i want to do this before i say that let me look at this note real quick hold on yes this is working perfectly with this okay Rose, did you Rose, I don't know if you at work, if you can hear me. Did you tag Daphne? Oh, Lord, why did I text? I mean, touch the scroll. Let me stop. <laughs> okay, we still in Proverbs, but now listen, we over the new living. Y'all just, y'all follow me? Just follow, okay? Proverbs chapter 22, new living. Listen, choose perspective, okay? Choose a good reputation over great riches. Being held in high esteem is better than silver and gold, okay? You can work all of the overtime that you want to. You can get two and three and five and six jobs. You can get the work from home job. You can drive Uber. You can do Uber Eats, Instacart, all of everything else. DoorDash, all of the rest, all of, the rest of them, okay? But what is your reputation like? Are you spread so thin that nobody can not really count on you? Because every time you look, all you're doing, you in the car, you're going somewhere else, you're doing something else. Your mind can't stay focused on one thing because you're talking about the next thing. I got to be somewhere in five minutes. What are you doing? Okay. Verse two says the rich and the poor. Rose, I don't know what you just said by what you meant. I want to make sure that you can hear me good and everything i was trying to see if you had from your um phone if you could tag but if you can't don't worry about it it's okay i'll tag her when i'm done okay uh verse two says this the rich and poor have this in common the lord made them both the lord made you both so guess what the lord is lord of all if you would allow him to be come on somebody that's what okay i thought i kind of thought that's what you were trying to say rose thank you for being clear about that the Lord will do whatever you need to do. In other words, somebody that has a bigger platform, bigger mic, more followers, okay, more money, whatever, they don't have any greater connection with God than you do. No, they don't. And this is definitely something that I counsel my ladies on, whoever asks, whoever would listen, okay? No, the Lord made you both and you are equal to him, which guess what? That means that he has an abundance of blessings for all of you. You can't pay your way to heaven. You can't pay your way into any of God's blessing, promise, purpose, none of the above, right? So do know that. And then verse three says, a prudent person foresees danger and takes precautions. The simpleton goes blindly and suffers the consequences. Don't go blindly. I'm talking about the next step. You shouldn't go blindly. I, who was I talking to? I was talking to one of my sisters, one of my clients, and I said to her, in this season, you just need to practice, practice asking God everything, seeking his face on everything. You need to ask him when you go to the bathroom. Y'all have heard me say it before, and it sounds crazy, but just practice. You need to practice hearing and heeding the voice of God. Okay, God, I'm getting ready to go to the bathroom. Is this a good time? <laughs> the Lord, because the Lord might tell you, to, the Lord might say, take a book in there, take a phone in there. You know what? Send a text, text out a prayer real quick while you're in there. It could be anything. It could be anything. The Lord might say, okay, I'm a, when you get on the bowl, I'm going to just say it like that. When you get on the bowl, I'm going to speak a word into your life. You never know. When you make room for God in your life, in your plans, God will do the phenomenal, the supernatural. We saw it last week. The supernatural. He will do mind-blowing things. He's still a miracle worker. He's still a way maker. Okay, he's still light in the darkness. We just have to let him be that. We have to let him be that. So we don't have to go blindly into any, any, any area of our life. Again, relationship, life, business, health, any of these things. Any of, you're with your children, okay, with your community. You may cannot get along with some of your cousins to save their life, okay? And sometimes 
It was real cute when they said on social media, but sometimes it's true. Sometimes the Holy Spirit in you does aggravate the demons in other people. And so, no, I'm not telling you that you are better than anybody, but I'm telling you that if you choose to do life God's way, then you are better off, right? And you don't have to go around saying that and announcing that. Your place is to go and be love and be light. You have to be the love, be the light, be the word. Okay, become the word that you've heard, that living epistle. That's what God is calling us to do, right? So you pray and say, God, I don't want to be arguing every time I go over to the family function. God, I know I might can't stay two hours, but I really do want to stay more than five minutes. Put God in the thing. Put God in there. Insert him into all of these areas. This is just an example that I'm sharing with you. Okay. So that you can feel whole. You can know that he has every area covered, every area, your money, every area covered. Seek his, the wisdom on these things. Okay, let me go to the next thing. I wanted to say something about Paul. Let me say, let me see where I'm at. Let me just say this real quick. I don't know how it fits or not, but I have it in the notes. I'm going to just talk on it briefly. Our brother Paul. And Hazel, your husband, was all in my business last night. <laughs> but that's how I know the Lord is uh, moving. He said the same thing to different spiritual leaders, different ones. Paul, you realize he was Saul, right? A cold killer, okay? He literally took his orders to kill the Christians. He felt like Christians were an abomination, he felt like if you weren't holding fast to the Mosaic law, to the Jewish, to, you know, the Torah and those things, he felt like you were an abomination and you needed to be wiped out. So he went on a crusade. He was a great executioner. But how many of us know, do you remember the story on Damascus Road? The Lord had to knock him down, bring him low, literally take his, come on somebody, had to take his natural sight Rose love Paul. Paul, I, I mean, Rose, I forgot that's your boy. Had to take his natural sight. Come on, somebody, and speak to him. When Paul was finally still and finally quiet, God asked him, Paul, why persecuted thou me? You not coming against these people. You are coming against me. You thought you were doing right. You thought you were carrying out the wishes of the higher power, the men. But I am the power, Paul. I am God. I am God. And if you choose to take up this new purpose, this assignment that I have for you, I will change your name. My God, I will change your perspective. And from this point on, you are a new man. You are walking a new path. What? Then God allowed his physical eyes to come back open. And he was no more the same. He had a switch, a change in his perspective. Some of us, that might need to be us. I'm not saying, and I'm not praying that the Lord blind you, but I'm saying, God, do whatever it takes to get my sister's attention, my brother's attention, Lord God, so that they will have this fulfilling, purpose-driven life in you, that this word will truly hold more weight than anything. This word has to hold more weight than your feelings, your emotions, your drama, your past, your issues, your opinion. You are right to have your opinions, your feelings. Some people might have done you wrong, mistreated you. Some people just have never given you your props. Some people have never do, given credit what credit is due. Some people have definitely probably wronged you in your life. All of us. All of us. Okay? What does that have to do with the assignment that God has put on your life? What it has to do is God allowed you to experience those things to share with somebody else to let them know, okay, you know what? I overcame that. And so can you, I overcame that. And it was not my defining story. I am so much more than an abusive ex-husband. I am so much more than sexual harassment that 
I was subject to at work. I am so much more than molestation. I'm so much more than 10, 20, 50 ex-boyfriends and nobody was one. I'm so much more than three, four, five baby daddies. I'm so much more than I have to change jobs every year. I'm constantly updating my resume. I just kind of can't get right. I'm so much more than I haven't felt comfortable in any church home every six months, every 10 months. I'm in a new church because it just doesn't feel right. I'm so much more. I am so much more. So these are pivotal. Come on, somebody. These are pivotal points. Okay. They don't have to be destiny defining moments. The only thing that does is just shine the light in the direction that you should go. You went this way, bumped your head. It didn't work. Okay. That should just nudge you right on over here in the right direction. A perspective change, a change of scenery. You have to see as God sees and say what God says about you. Okay, come on, let me rock in here. I don't, I, every time I say I don't have a lot, let me not say that. Because <laughs> I need to get through that. I actually have several. Okay, come on, we're just going to go through this because it is all good. It is all good. Now we're going to flip on over. We're back new living. I think we're new living the rest of the night, okay? Um, And looking at Galatians. Okay, so wait, now, I think I put that right here. Let me see what my other note is. Yes, because God's note to the church at um, Galatians, God, uh, Paul's note to the people to the at the church of the Ephesians. He again went from a killer of the Christians to launching all of these churches in East Asia, all in the missionary journeys. It was Paul. Paul went and set up these churches. He went and sent brothers. He had gotten locked up. He was in a Roman prison for a lot of these letters that he wrote. That's why he couldn't. That's why he was writing the letters. He could not go. He was in jail. Okay. Locked up for sharing the gospel of the good news of Jesus. They made it literally illegal, which I think is bogus, but that was the law. Okay. That was a law at the time that you could not do anything in Jesus name. You couldn't speak, you know, of Jesus to Christ. And that was, you know, that was against their law. They didn't believe that they wanted to keep their political status quo. They wanted to keep their religious politics as they were. Right. Okay. So perspective, perspective. So now listen to what Paul is saying in Galatians chapter five, verses 13 and 14. I'm gonna just go through this for you have been called. Oh my goodness. Perspective. You have been called to live in freedom, my brothers and sisters, but don't use your freedom to satisfy your sinful nature. Don't use that as an excuse to not do what God has said. Don't think that, Oh God doesn't care if I do this. Yes, God does. Instead, use your freedom to serve one another in love. I think I said that already for the whole law can be summed up in this one command. Love your neighbor as yourself. Remember, I was just talking about the cousins. Okay. Remember I talked earlier about your significant other. Y'all, you just may not be lining up. You may, just may not be jobbing. Right. Okay. Love your neighbor as yourself. Do you know that your cousin, your significant other, your children, those are also your brothers in Christ. So no matter what God is having you to do for them, to do in their presence, to serve them in whatever way, whether it's bringing them a meal, whether it's bringing them a cold bottle of water, whether it's um, tucking them in at night, whatever it is, homework, whatever it is. Whatever role you have to play in the lives of these people, don't get into a backbiting. Don't get into a, a resentful mode. Just know that's still and yet your brother and sister in Christ. And God has still commanded you to love them and to do whatever it is that he has placed on your heart to do. Not those things like, oh, they don't, I know they just be talking about me behind my back, whatever. No, do what God says. Let me see what you say, Hazel. Anything we had to go through was a part of his plan. Hazel said she was delivered from the shackles once she understood that the things that she had to go through, some crazy family stuff. Hazel could tell you her own self. Crazy family stuff. And then when God released the information and she got some understanding, she was like, oh, okay, now this makes sense. Now I understand. Kind of felt like he was mistreated. Kind of felt like you was picked at all kind of things and then it's just like god why would you allow that to happen god i love you why did you let that happen to me 
it was all a part of his plan. It was all a part of his grand plan to use that for his glory. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? We've said that before too. Okay, now we're going to go back to Matthew chapter 6. I have another part of Matthew chapter 6. I'm going to obey these notes and I'm going to go ahead on and share this. Uh, this is good perspective. Y'all, I don't want you to feel, I hope you can feel. So this to me is like a four course meal. So I got your steak right here. I got your potato or <laughs> potato right here. I got your broccoli right here. And then we're going to have a piece of cake afterwards. So it's, it's pulled all together. Everything tastes different, but it's all a part of this same meal. Okay. So look at this. Matthew chapter 6 verse 7 and 8 says when you pray we're talking about perspective we're talking about mindset how we're thinking how we're viewing ourselves our lives every area of our life how we are viewing it how we are flowing in these areas so this is dealing with the area of prayer listen when you pray don't babble on as the Gentiles do they think their prayers are answered merely by repeating their words again and again don't be like them for your father knows exactly what you need even before you ask him. I said that already. God said that earlier when um, the message before the message, I had to get that. And I, cause I, now that my notes wasn't completely in order, but I know I had that on my heart. We're not using manipulation. We're not trying to use psycho <laughs> psychology on God, but we're knowing that he's our father. That's how we approach him, that he wants the very best for us, that he would do absolutely anything for us. And not all of these fine words and all of this and all of that, but perspective, knowing that he literally, he already knows what you stand in need of. He already wants to, um, meet that need to exceed anything that you can even ask think or imagine so having that perspective when you pray when you go to your knees when you close your eyes when you fold your hands having that perspective is the most powerful thing it's the most powerful thing okay let me go to the next thing because my time getting short here i'm gonna get all of this to us hold on y'all my scroll game is a little bit strong tonight i don't even know how to act i didn't scroll successfully up and down this page several times i shouldn't have said nothing because now i bet if i said it it's gonna mess it up <laughs> yes <clears throat> okay now one thing i'm going to disobey the notes just a little bit i don't know why i don't have this in order who is sharonda's laughing at me <laughs> um let's stay right there in matthew chapter six why did i have that i'm not gonna ask i'm not gonna spend our time trying to figure out why i have that out of order let's go down <laughs> yes hazel thank you <laughs> matthew six skipping right on down <clears throat> to verse 22 we still new living your perspective okay your eye is like a lamp yes rose your eyes like a lamp that provides light for your body oh my god this is so good your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, okay, when how you view is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. Oh my goodness, I almost can stop right here, but I'm not. But when your eye is unhealthy, when you can't see straight, when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light that you think you have is actually darkness oh my goodness i'm gonna have to i'm gonna stop it right here i'm gonna stop it right here if the light you think you have is actually darkness how deep that darkness is what what let me read it again because that's crazy that is crazy your eye come on verse 22 6 and 22 of matthew your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, when your perspective is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. But when your eye is unhealthy, mm, 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 your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. I could read it a third time. I think I'm going to have to. Y'all, if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. My God, Hazel, you got the eyes on me. <laughs> your eye is like a lamp that provides light for your body. When your eye is healthy, your whole body is filled with light. 
But when your eye is unhealthy, your whole body is filled with darkness. And if the light you think you have is actually darkness, how deep that darkness is. When you think you have the right perspective, when you think that you have come this far on your own, that you can do it all alone by yourself, when you feel like your money, your degrees, your pool, your personality, your charm, your looks, your sex appeal, honey, whatever, has gotten you where you are and will take you wherever you need to go. That is darkness. What did it say? It says, how deep, Hazel, how deep that darkness is. Yes, that is, that is, that's an excellent idea for sure. How deep that darkness is. Y'all, we have got to get a clear perspective. Your eye is like a lamp. Y'all, we got to see as God see. Have I been saying that all night or what? We have got to see as God sees. And we have to say what God says. We have to speak this word. There's a song, only speak the word, speak the word of God. Never mind what you see, speak the word for victory. Never mind what you feel, speak the word and you can be healed. Never mind what you see, speak the word for victory. I've shared that with us in this Bible study. I know for a fact I have. Y'all, let me, let me close it up with this right here and y'all get your prayer request ready. No one, this is verse 24, still in Matthew chapter 6, New Living. No, oh my God, no one can serve two masters, for you will hate one and love the other. You will be devoted to one and despise the other. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to money. You cannot serve God and be enslaved to doing things your own way, trying to get money. You can't be a servant of God and be enslaved to get in that man in your own way fellas that lady in your own way you have got to put your plans in the hands of the man you have got to place these things in god god show me i told y'all god show me what to do when i go in the bathroom god show me what to do when i go on the job god show me what to do when I go pump this gas? God, show me what to do when I go to this post office. God, show me what to do when I go on Walmart and Target. God, show me what to do. God, I got to get on this bus, this subway, this commuter train, whatever it is. God, show me what to do. You ever wonder why people, mostly pre-COVID, I don't know what the heck is going on <laughs> in COVID. People still say stuff to me. Homeless people. I told y'all I had to uh, repent to the Lord. <laughs> I'm just laughing. When that homeless man was coming up to my car and I thought he couldn't hear me. Child, that was just so funny and that was so terrible. When God allows people to come up to you, it's because they see your light. And so some people come because they want to be a part of that light. It makes them feel good. And some people are really offended by that light, honey. And they are going to respond to you in that way. And they don't want to be bothered. They think you think you too much and all this and all of that. But guess what? As long as you are flowing in that love, in that light, then God got you. Because guess what? We're not visitors in the presence of God. Hello, we are dwellers. So we get what? We get those benefits. We get power, protection, and provision. What is it? We get power, protection, and provision because we are covered, because we are dwellers in the presence of God. Perspective. Perspective. See God as your father. See yourself as a dweller. See yourself in victory. See God as your ultimate provider, your total source and resource. My God, this is free game. This is free game. This could be a paid conference right here. Okay. God is awesome. 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 God, I'm going to stop there. Yes. Do I have more? I got tons. All right, Sharonda, we're going to be praying for you and love you. We wrapping up anyway. Thank you for hanging out with us tonight and we'll see you tomorrow too. Oh, Sharonda, wait a minute. I didn't make Sharonda. Don't sign off yet. I didn't, I was supposed to make this announcement at the beginning. I am going to be featured. I hope you stay up late. It'll be, you check your local time. I'm going to be featured on the Sister Speak Brother Break Show. Yes, I have a full feature 
30 minute TV interview. It's 9 30 p.m. Eastern time. I'm gonna say all of this again after we pray. But Sharonda, I want you to catch that. The Sister Speak Brother Break show. Once you get your dinner, get the kids straight, go back in the Chosen Chick Discussion Group or my personal page. Check that link. Check that out. I hope you can stay up that late and um see it. I think it's probably gonna be it's gonna be either 8 30 or 7 30 your time, Sharonda. So yay! And I will make that announcement again. For y'all that didn't catch it, I just wanted Sharonda to hear that. Okay, y'all. Awesome, awesome God. Like I said, yes, I did have um, a few more verses to share with us. But God knows exactly what he's doing. Yep. Perspective. Perspective. Man. So, so good. Thank you, Sharonda. See you later. Love you. Have a good night. Y'all, if y'all have prayer requests, Sharonda, if you have a quick prayer request you want to drop, but we're just going to pray for you and the girls and Mr. Sutton. Excuse me. And I have no idea. This mic is pretty powerful. I hope y'all can't just hear me swallowing because that is gross. <laughs> Excuse me. But like I said, we are dealing with this Georgia heat. My goodness. So if y'all have prayer requests, Please drop them now. I will pray right here for you. Like I said, if you have um, a lengthy or confidential prayer request, something that you're not ready to share publicly, but you want support in prayer, please email me at thehealedgirl at gmail.com. Other than that, we're going to pray in general. And anybody who has anything that they want to drop real quick here. Yes, it's on. Oof. God is so good. Y'all, <laughs> that perspective is something, honey. You have got to see things the way God sees them. That's just it. <clears throat> and my throat is super, super dry tonight. Thank you, God. <clears throat> Excuse me, please. Okay, I'm going to give y'all a few more seconds. I know slow typers in the building like myself it's all good and the wi-fi does what it does i so appreciate y'all time yes pastor drake's family bless his soul rest his soul definitely praying for the family oh god okay We'll definitely be praying for a co-worker with her father. And she is very young. Bless her heart. The Ebenezer Church family. Absolutely. <clears throat> My goodness. We're definitely going to keep Sharonda in prayer. We're going to keep um, Afi and Vivian in prayer. We want to keep um, Alexandria in prayer. Those who popped in. Tiffany and had to pop out. So appreciate y'all. Okay, we're going to pray, y'all, and then we're going to make a couple announcements. Repeat one very special announcement that I'm super excited about. <laughs> and then we are going to get on out of here. Let me position myself a little bit. Definitely going to keep all families in prayer. And yes, sis, we will keep your family in prayer as well. All right. Heavenly Father, in the name of Jesus, God, you did your thing. And I just smile. I'm not, at this point, I can't be surprised, God, because you just, you just do your thing. And I just thank you, God, that we position ourselves, God, to hear and be obedient. And that's why I pray that way. God, thank you for putting it on my heart to pray that. God, thank you for making us to become this word we have heard. God, we are living epistles. God, you have written our lives. You have written our story. You have blessed us in a way that so surpasses our imagination. God, you are all some awesome 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 god just thank you god we could never 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 say thank you enough so we praise your name we bless your name we say hallelujah hallelujah in the highest god bless your name honor your name we humble ourselves before you we bow before you on tonight and we just thank you lord god because you did not have to do it but you did you showed up and like you do god you showed out lord god no matter the kind of rough start that we got off to lord god but you bless it you cool things off and smooth things down as only you can god and we thank you we recognize you we acknowledge you in all things god 
we give thanks. So we say thank you, Lord. God, there is a child of yours, God, in her 20s twenties right now, God, having to be a caregiver to her father who has become ill. My God, Lord, we know what 20 year olds do. 20 year olds want to eat junk food. They want to chill out. They want to do this social media thing or whatever. And God, she has had to step up to the plate and care for her father. But God, we know that she can do all things through Christ who strengthens her god give her the strength give her the endurance give her the compassion give her the power and the love god give her the joy give her the grace give her the peace and kindness little god to be able to care for her father as he no doubt wants care for her when she was just a child and god to be honest in her 20s it wasn't that long ago it wasn't that long ago she couldn't have imagined that at this young age she would have to play that role but god i thank you <clears throat> and i got as a caregiver myself my god i know what that feels like so god i'm just asking you to be with this young lady i'm asking you to be with my sister that brought the prayer request Lord god she's always always looking for ways to pray for somebody else oh god and i thank you thank you lord god for those who have to work in care facilities lord god who have to work in all kind of health care facilities lord god <clears throat> thank you for blessing all of those and all of us who are caregivers lord god whatever role we play thank you for giving us the power the compassion to do it with love and to do it in you god all these things oh god as we serve our fellow man we are serving you so let us do it as unto you let you get the glory and you get the honor in it lord god and thank you thank you that there's a reward we don't do it for the reward god but thank you that you are so loving that you've already prepared a reward for us so let us just flow in that obedience and do what you call us to do, Lord God. Let us continue to have a blessed perspective. God, we come to you on behalf of those who are grieving, God. We have had um, current and recent losses, Lord God. And some of us, Lord God, are still hurting from losses of time past. God, they hurt, Lord God, when our loved ones are no longer here with us. So God, Dr. Solomon Drake, my God, has gone home to be with you, Lord. Be with his family. Be with his greater Ebenezer church family, Lord God. Those who loved him, followed him. Anybody who's ever shook his hand or heard him preach or whatever, seen him smile, Lord God. Be with us, Lord God, as we are mourning the loss of this great man of God. But thank you, Lord God, that just like in the book of Acts, when you said someone has to fill in this place, Lord God, that they will never take the place of the person. They can't take the place of Solomon Drake, Lord God, but bless them to step into that anointing, into that gap that needs to be filled, Lord God. Fulfill the role, God. Have your will in your way, Lord God. But God, please be with his family. Be with all of those who are grieving loss and mourning right now, Lord God. There's a mom who has lost a daughter. There's a grandma who's lost a grandchild, Lord God. Sisters and brothers have had losses, Lord God. Husband and wives have had losses. Mothers and fathers, my God, have had losses. <clears throat> Daughters and sons, excuse me. Daughters and sons, God, have had losses. And we thank you. Thank you, Lord God for mending the fences, mending the broken hearts, Lord God, and letting us have the proper perspective to turn to you, God, because it is the Holy Spirit that heals. It is the Holy Spirit that comforts. So thank you. Thank you for your healing. Thank you for your comfort. Thank you for your love on today, God. Thank you for blessing families. Lord God, I thank you for my chosen chick sisters who are joining me live on tonight, those who will catch the replay, Lord God, those who will sit on YouTube, but especially those who are catching live, Lord God, those who popped in, had to pop out. I'm asking an extra special blessing on them, God, that you do something in their faith 
their family, their finances. Lord God, your mercies are new every day. Your grace is available to us every day, Lord God. So do something mind-blowing. Do something wonderful. Thank you, God, that Amos 9 is real in our lives. Blessings on blessings on blessings. One thing fast on the heel of the other, Lord God, that we will be overcome with blessings, Lord God, that our head will swim from turning so fast, looking for one blessing and looking to the next one, Lord God. Thank you for doing it, God. Thank you, Lord God, for healing as ever before, Lord God. I don't want to forget anything, God. I already pray for the sisters who popped in and left, Lord God. So just bless them, Lord God. Bless us, Lord God, that we keep the right perspective, that your word hold more weight than anything in our lives, Lord God, that we would keep our mind set on you, that you would keep us in perfect peace, that the scales, my God, will fall from our eyes, that we will see clear, Lord God, your path, that we will have a purpose-driven life, that our life will be filled with with joy that our life will be fulfilling that we will sleep well at night god i speak sweet rest to anybody under the sound of my voice anybody who will hear this prayer lord god whether it's in real time lord god or at another time that the peace of you will fall on them and that they will have just smoothness throughout the rest of their day that they will have calmness in the night that they won't have worries or frustration but that they will just have peace god and i just thank you i'm asking an extra special blessing on my sister marcy bush who has seen fit lord god to share her platform with me to tell my story on tonight lord god i thank you for doing something awesome and phenomenal you have used this woman to kick start things in my life and in the lives of others lord god and i thank you for the ripple effect for that platform lord god that she's sharing lord god that it is going to be deliverance that is going to be divine healing and divine restoration my god in the lives of your people and i just thank you lord god anything that i might have forgotten lord god i'm not gonna start to call names i already said some names but you know i'm asking special blessing on each and every one of my chosen chick sisters each and every one who will hear this and view this that it will be a blessing lord god i thank you for showing up blowing up and just wrecking shop god as only you can and i love you lord god in jesus holy name thank you for blessing all of my sisters my friends my family my loved ones lord god in my spiritual family as well as my natural family god in jesus holy and precious name lord god seal us keep us hold us and bless us now god hallelujah and amen 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 I appreciate y'all so much. I love y'all. Y'all, excuse me. Everything is going on right here. Awesome, 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 God. Lord, thank you for how you're blessing my sister Dolores in a mighty, mighty way, God. She just popped in, Lord God. We stand in agreement with her, and thank you for what you're doing in her life, how you healed her, how you're blessing her financially, how you're blessing her housing situation, her family, just blessing everything, God. Thank you. So, y'all... First, let me repeat that now. I can't believe I didn't say this at the beginning, y'all. And I need, I got, I got a text I need to send out. Text a friend, tag a friend, let them know. The Sister Speak Brother Break Show will be premiering my feature episode. What? My feature episode tonight at 9.30 p.m. Eastern. That is 8.30 Memphis time. And that is 6.30 LA time. Anybody in the middle, look up your own stuff. <laughs> 9.30 p.m. Eastern time tonight. That is going to be on Facebook, Instagram, and YouTube. My sister, Marcy Bush, who I will tag in this later. Follow her. It's going to be premiering live on all of her channels. And it's also, if you have a smart TV or Roku TV, this is how I watch every week because I just love to watch it on my TV, even though I can get YouTube on the TV. There is a beautiful channel that all types of ministers and outreach get on. There is a channel called Preach the Word Worldwide. That's a whole lot. Preach the Word Worldwide is a channel on Roku. Yes. So you check that out on your smart TV. And you can get the Sister Speak Brother Break show every week, Thursday at 9.30 p.m. So I need everybody, who? Everybody to tune in tonight, 9.30 p.m. Again, that's 8.30 Memphis time, and that is 6.30 
LA time. The others, y'all look up your own, check your local listing. Okay. But um, I'm going to tag Marcy Bush in here. I'm so thankful to her. Gosh, we've been, God has blessed us to partner and be a blessing to each other. This woman has been a blessing to my life. So definitely check that out tonight, tonight, tonight. And I'll be sharing here, of course, in the um page. So also, you already know what it is. First of all, we get down like this. What? every thursday thursday 7 p.m eastern so next time bring a friend tag a friend invite someone into the group i love it shout out to y'all who have already um added so many friends i so appreciate that shout out to my sister admin chelsea she couldn't be with us tonight but she is a blessing also shout out to my other sister admin tiff yes i didn't need to make a grand announcement but tiff is one of our admins as well god has placed on my heart um and so she uh she's here for us as well and we're so thankful for her so listen y'all know what it is tomorrow 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 fun friday listen we start in the morning we got our jokes we got our games we're going to be sharing all the good stuff all day go to chosen chick discussion group page right here where you are come on ladies go to the top of the page smash that notification bell so it comes right in your facebook notifications the latest and the greatest all of the new stuff the good jokes the good games so you got a little bit of this a little bit of that we found out exactly what kind of chicks we got in this group what would you choose what would you do in this situation then right around lunchtime which i completely forgot to announce last week right around lunchtime we have our official chick chat this is a real life situation with real life players folks who are looking for advice looking to find out okay am i being a jerk about this what is going on how do you feel i want to know how my chosen chick sisters feel about this youtubers my ladies if you're not in chosen chick discussion group what are you even doing i will drop that link you need to get in with us for the good thursday night bible study live in living color as well as the fun friday tomorrow is going to be a good one last week we had a crazy situation with a wedding and a maid of honor just way too much going on as mom said some hooky pooky happened <laughs> with the groom and the maid of honor it was years ago but it's just like whoa what do you even do so we got another good one for us tomorrow so check it out fun friday the jokes the games the chick chat all other things and i'm definitely in order tune in to sister speak brother break tonight 9 30 p.m eastern check your local listing let me see you friday for fun friday all day long we got good stuff coming you be on facebook all day anyway don't act like you don't so check us out and then three i need to see you right back here my girls next week thursday 7 p.m eastern right here in the group have a good blessed night i love you all so 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 very very much have sweet rest see you next time all my love to you Good night.